this is LED displays and it's kind of big and I'm not sure how to go about getting inside all this tape if there's a right wrong way okay yeah this foam can peel off in layers I hope this doesn't peel back to something just like one tiny LED display I'm getting there. I think the tape layers are done. No, there's more. Oh, stuff! Hey, this looks like the data and power cables of one of those big LED RGB displays. I've been waiting for this for a month and a half. So at least it's packaged well, considering it probably came a long distance. I think we're down to it. Yes. 64 by 64 RGB matrix panel. So it looks like there's data in and arrows going this way. Is this data out so you can cascade these? I believe you can chain these together and make one huge display. And these are used in public TV displays and message signs and things. So I guess power is right here in the middle. We have power cables, 5 volts ground, part number, so P2, I believe that means the pitch is 2 millimeters between LEDs. And I would measure the pitch between these, but my digital caliper had a bit of a battery leak, so I have to neutralize and clean that out. So I'll use the analog section of my caliper, and if I go 1 centimeter center to center, so 1 centimeter apart so you have a total of six LEDs that looks like a pitch of two millimeters 64 by 64 pixels P2 is a two millimeter pitch between the LEDs there's all the specs size of LEDs runs on five volts max power consumption I guess if you run everything in white 17 watts or average six watts so you hook up all your control signals and you need to patch a few cables between these data connectors. Here's your 5 volts and ground in. I'd like to see pictures like this showing up on my display, but I'm having trouble getting it working so far. I tried following a couple of projects from different people that use ESP8266. I tried their exact sketches. In some cases the sketches wouldn't even compile. I'm not sure if that's because I have different board file versions or driver versions for the libraries. But even when I make modifications, try to simplify it down, I still get flickering. White looks okay, but colors flicker. I just don't know enough about the displays, I guess. So I'm not sure if maybe the display has an issue. I only have the one, so I can't really do an A-B test. What I did do is try two different ESP8266 boards. I tried a Node MCU and I tried a WeMOS D1 Mini. Same exact behavior on both. So I know there's other libraries and I think I saw one that uses just a regular Arduino Uno and I think I saw one that uses a Teensy. So we can move this aside for now and make room for some viewer mail from a Patreon supporter. Let's see what's in here. electrostatic sensitive devices and inside ICs well, there's some hefty looking silicon PIC 16C57 might have to look these part numbers up PIC 16F84 16F873 16F84 PIC 16C57 I was using devices very similar to this maybe around 20 years ago or so. Basically just anything where I would need a, a simple microcontroller. I was not doing anything timing critical so I was using internal RC oscillators. And the same with the PIC 16F87X. I either had an 873 or 874. And in this case, I was doing a project that did use analog to digital. I had an op amp feeding into this and I was using the UART to communicate with RS-232 on a PC. Mixed signal microcontrollers. 
16-bit sigma delta A to D converter with differential inputs. That looks like something interesting. I could probably do something with this and an Arduino and these MSP430 G2, X, 5, 2, and 1, 2, 16-bit timers, and up to 16 I.O. capacitive touch pins. Well, that's great. I do need to get back into some PIC microcontroller stuff. I used PIC, and then I used Atmel, and I still have all of my programming hardware, probably leftover project files on the hard drive somewhere. So this inspires me to dig out some old nostalgic stuff again. Next, we have something called Module, which could be anything. Oh, that looks like an ST-Link programmer for the blue pill. How do you open this? It rips away here. Yes, ST-Link with this cap over the USB. Probably don't need that. And some DuPont wires. I got a couple of ST boards a couple of months ago now, and finally this rolls in. So now I just got to figure out where did I put those boards so I can get started. My ST link was $2.50. Now they seem to be going for $3.27 and up. ST link V2, STM8, and STM32 download programmer. And I like this feature. You don't need to read instructions. This is electronic components, and they look like 8-pin chips. AT Tiny 13 times 5. Yeah, recently I ordered a bunch of different AT Tinies because now that I have a way, this is a partly assembled board, to program fuses on these, it's leading me down a path of doing some more microcontroller work. So between Atmel and PIC, maybe I should dig out my Motorola 6811 as well. I still have to find the evaluation board for the 6811. AT-Tiny 13, dip through-hole version. I paid 285 for five of them. Now the cheapest in through-hole is 357. Since I've now got my fuse programmer running for the AT-Tiny series, I wanted some various chips in addition to the AT Tiny 85. This says SMD resistor, which since I'm doing more PCB layouts nowadays, I do need some parts and yes, those look like service mount resistors. And it looks like I cut through the Ziploc bag, so these are going to have to go into a tray at some point real soon. So these look, I don't know, are these 0805s or 0603? And I don't see a label on them. I hope I can see the part markings. I don't want to have to get a multimeter on these. Well, at least I can see the markings. In the meantime, let's look it up and see what I ordered. I only see one listing for this exact 2,000 pieces of 0805 resistors, 80 values between 10 ohms and 910K. So this is the exact listing I bought from. And I paid this $5.68, but I did not pay shipping. Here's all the values you get. You get 25 each of these values. So I thought with all the surface mount PCB projects I'm doing lately, I'm going to need all kinds of resistors, and I'm going to be definitely designing the 0805 or the smallest 0603 into these designs. So having a stash of generic looking values, I should be able to complete the projects. If I need something really specific, an in-between resistance that's more precise to do the output voltage on a boost converter, I'll just have to use a different resistor, maybe make a special order or something. But this is going to go a long way in upcoming future near-term projects. This says anti-static brush, and yep, I ordered a bunch of those brushes that I can maybe scrub a PCB with, help get rid of flux or other debris on there. So I'm assuming that's what this is. It looks like the right size. It's well packaged. Almost too well. Okay, yes. So we got five brushes that are supposedly ESD safe. Reasonable bristle stiffness so you can scrub a board. 
This one went a bit hairy. That's okay. I paid $1.97 for five pieces of black PCB Rework ESD Anti-Static Dust Cleaning Brushes. It's good to have five of them because you can use them for different purposes. You don't just necessarily want one and then four spares. Maybe one's for specifically trying to brush off flux and you don't want other chemicals mixed in, things like that. And you can also get different styles of brushes depending what you need to do. Synthetic fiber, 170 millimeters long, good size to work with. And again, working on some PCB projects. When it's cleanup time, you gotta be ready. Cotton swabs can only go so far. So there we go, lots of new fun things if I can ever get this display working. New chips to program, new programming apparatus, and some SMD assembly and rework parts. Thanks for stopping by. Extra special thanks to Patreon supporters. I will definitely find some projects for this. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you want to see what I create with all of this stuff, stay tuned for future videos. See you then.